Welcome. My name is Andras Bencu. I am the scientific director of the Hungarian Artificial Intelligence National Laboratory, a consortium of 11 institutions in the country. I lead a data science research lab at the Institute for Computer Science and Control in Hungary. In this presentation, my research team of data scientists, machine learning experts, and data engineers show how we use our new Supermicro A plus 4124GU NART GPU server and compare its performance to our older systems. Based in Budapest, Hungary, the Institute for Computer Science and Control, Staki in short in Hungarian, as we are known in Europe in general, is a research organization that focuses on a range of research domains, including computer science, engineering, information technology, and intelligence systems. Staki scientists and engineers focus their research areas that require advanced GPU capabilities, including medical image processing, machine perception for autonomous vehicles, and robotics. Staki is part of the Ötvös Loránd Research Network, who provided funding for the Supermacro server and is in the procurement process of installing a large research cloud that includes Supermicro Super Server's 1029 GQ TVRT that contains four NVIDIA Tesla V100 with 32 gigabytes each and Supermicro A Plus servers that contains A100 with 40 gigabytes each. Staki leads the Hungarian Artificial Intelligence National Laboratory, a consortium of five universities, four research centers, the Special Service for National Security, and the Hungarian State Treasury. Funded in 2020 as the Coordinated National Artificial Intelligence Umbrella for Collaboration, we funnel business needs and international research relations by leveraging on the existing relationship of our partner institutions. Our project office serves as a single point of contact for international collaboration in the area of AI research and applications. Top management of our external industry partners, Aldi, Bosch, Continental, Ericsson, Nokia, Hungarian Telecom, to name a few, serve as advisory board members and help shape our research agenda. Our algorithms that our researchers use demanded a scalable computing environment, not just for the CPU, but also for the GPUs. Additionally, some of the algorithms required more than one GPU to complete the task in a reasonable amount of time. Our team at Staki investigated several servers from various system manufacturers and settled on using the Supermicro A+, 4124GO NART GPU server. The system contains two AMD CPUs and eight NVIDIA HGX A100 GPUs. The system also includes one terabyte of DRAM. Using multiple GPUs that are connected together with the NVIDIA NVLink and NVIDIA NV switch, the GPUs can communicate up at up to two terabytes per second. The AMD CPUs operating at 3.2 gigahertz run the applications interacting with the GPU subsystem as needed. The NVIDIA HGX A100 8 GPU, 40 gigabytes each, contains the latest tensor code GPUs, enable applications to run faster and return results to the researchers faster than ever before. Our previous GPUs include GeForce RTX 2080, Titan RTX, and Quadro RTX 8000. Compared to our previous generation of servers, algorithms run significantly faster. In the talk, we demonstrate the performance of specific medical image processing tasks, including the segmentation of cardiac MRI, dental CT, as well as chest CT data enrichment by Progen, and other 3D convolutional network applications. Hi, this is Anasha Tamu, and this notebook is about cardiac magnetic resonance image segmentation. We are doing this task as a first step towards our long COVID project. The long COVID project is about predicting which patients would develop long-term effects and conditions after having the coronavirus. 
Here I'm working with the automated cardiac diagnosis challenge, ACPC data set, data set from 2017. This data set contains SINA MRI images, and these are together with the corresponding manual segmentation masks uh, that are based on the analysis of one clinical expert. These masks contain three uh, parts, the left ventricle, the right ventricle, and the myochondrium, as you can see in the figure. And here each patient comes with additional uh, information, but we don't use them now. And there are 100 subjects in total, a mixture of healthy and pathological subject groups, and there are about 20 images for each of them. And the raw input images are provided through the NIFT format. As the first step, we just import the dependencies. Then we pre-process, uh, load and pre-process the MRIs and the mask for every patient. We just make sure that they are in the right format, that they have the same size and they are normalized in color. Then as an example, uh, here are three uh, different MRIs together with the mass and as a check, uh, these are placed on top of each other. And here we can see that they indeed match. After that, we create the train and test data set. We're just making sure that the data is in the right format. Uh, we have to put it into TensorFlow input pipeline because we're using TensorFlow. And there are also some additional parameters like the batch size and train length set here. As the model, we use a modified unit. A uh, unit consists of an encoder or dense sampler and the decoder or upsampler part. And we have four output channels because we have three parts of the segmentation that we want to identify in the heart and we have everything else as the fourth channel. To improve robustness and runtime, the pre-trained model MobileNet V2 is used as an encoder we're basically just uh, defining its layers here. As for the decoder, a series of upsample blocks are implemented uh, already in TensorFlow examples, and we're using just that here for simplicity now. This part is just putting together the final model. The done sampling, upsampling part, and the convolutional net as the last uh, layer. After that, we define the optimizer to be Adam and the loss function to be a sparse category called cost entropy. And we do that because the network assigns each pixel a label, just like in music class prediction, and each channel is going to predict a class. And in this case, uh, using this loss is advised. As for predictions, for each pixel, the channel with the highest value gets assigned a subset label, and this function it makes exactly that. Then there are just a few different functions defined to show as the final predictions nicely. As for training, we um, set epochs to be 100 and also defined validation um, sets. And here you can see uh, the final predicted mass. Uh, after 100 epochs and uh, during training, uh, you could have seen uh, the prediction after every epoch and how it has evolved. Lastly, we can see the losses here. The training loss goes down and the validation loss goes a bit up. This means that we have overtrained uh, our model, which is not too surprising because we don't have that many training examples and examples in general yet uh, in this ACPC dataset, but we hope that combining this with our own uh, dataset that we are getting from some other university in Hungary and some other available datasets, uh, we can make the model even more accurate. And lastly, uh, there are some more examples of uh, different MRIs and the predicted mass, and you can see that these match quite nicely. Thank you.
Hi, I am Anna Ország. The motivation of this work is to improve the spatial resolution of the CT scan by generating more slices than that the CT scanner provides. The task is to predict the extra slice from the two neighboring slices with the so-called super resolution technique. Our research data is 5,000 lung CTs. One CT scan generally consists of 600 slices, each with 512 times 512 pixels. For this small demo, I use 143 CTs. For this task, we use a deep convolutional neural network with the two outer slices as inputs and the middle slice as output. The network begins with six convolutional layers, three of them learning from one of the input image, three of them from the other. Then comes a concatenation and again three convolutional layers. We loop over the data set multiple times and then we check the peak signal to noise ratio for the test CTs. It is a commonly used term to quantify reconstruction quality for images. Higher PSNR generally indicates that the reconstruction is of higher quality. Between 40 and 50, it is fairly good. Here we can see three consecutive slices. We want to predict the middle slice. Uh, the prediction can be seen here. And this is a comparison of the original and the predicted middle slice. Thank you. Hi, my name is Daniel Ratz, and in this notebook, I'd like to present some measurements we performed in order to highlight the difference in computational power between our NVIDIA Titan RTX card and our new A100 processing unit. For this measurement, we chose the task of image classification on the very well known Cypher 10 dataset. The dataset contains 60K of 32 by 32 colored images belonging to 10 classes altogether. The dataset is split to 50K of training data and 10K of testing data. For the first experiment, we used a relatively small convolutional neural network and trained it on the Cypher 10 dataset using a single instance of both GPUs. In this figure, the x-axis contains time in seconds, while the y-axis is the accuracy on the test data achieved by our model. One can see that the A100 reaches 70% much sooner than the Titan. Also, it is worth to note that it takes about 400 seconds for the latter one to achieve A100's best accuracy, which was achieved after about 100 seconds. For the next experiment, the same training process was performed using a bigger convolutional neural network. The figure here contains the change of test loss over time. By the time we get the minimal test loss using the Titan RTX, the model on the A100 had been overfitting long ago. In our third experiment, we wanted to see how much parallel computing using NVIDIA's recent technology to connect GPUs with each other, called MVLink, can help us accelerating the training process. In this example, a dense net model is used for image classification, in which all convolutional layers are connected to each other in a feedforward fashion. In this figure, we can see that in case of the parallel model training has been stopped a little over 1000 seconds. A single A100 unit needed more than 4,500 seconds to achieve the same accuracy as the multiple GPUs achieved on the test loss. Thank you for your attention. In the past few minutes, my researchers demonstrated how we use our new uh, Supermicro APAS server for various medical image classification tasks. For the standard cipher classification task, using two A100 uh, GPUs connected with the NVLink, uh, we already reach an um, accuracy in a thousand seconds better than uh, using uh, our older systems for a very long run. Uh, in the summary table, we see a speed of, of 125 to 260%. So we see our applications run faster. Uh, we can now run algorithms that require more than one GPU. And based on our findings, um, the Hungarian Research Cloud uh, is it the procurement process of uh, buying additional super microservers with our first uh, A plus server acting as the flagship machine dedicated for my research team. In the name of my team, I would like to thank you for your attention.